Welcome everyone. Welcome. Welcome Howard Broadcasting <coughs> Corporation. Howard Broadcasting Corporation viewers to the latest in the wonderful world of um, radio format TV. Free television, direct to your homes. <laughs> Paid for by our sponsors. <laughs> oh, well done. Our sponsors this week are... Good, yeah, we'll think of something. Yeah. Great night at Hennigan's, by the way, last week, mate. Yes. Nina Gilligan, headliner, fantastic. All the acts were pretty good. Yes. In fact, they were very good, most of them were very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but the food also, very most of them, that sounded awful. They were all very, very good. <laughs> the Thai food at Hennigan's is awesome. Glad I know they've, they've changed chef, nothing wrong with the way it was, mm. but Tong Thai now do it. Uh, if you want takeaway in the Tong, or indeed Bolton area, takeaway in the Tong, Lee. <laughs> Would you, have you ever enjoyed a takeaway in the Tong? In the Tongmore area of Bolton and all surrounding boroughs, Tong Thai. Yes. That's Tong Thai. That's our first. That's our first sponsor organised. Yeah, that's free chips for me for a week. Yes. They don't do chips. <laughs> um, but yeah, great night at Hennigan's. Who have you got next month at Hennigan's, Lee? Do we know? Next month we've got a charity night <clears> at the end of August, uh, and then at the end of September we've got a fantastic Lewis Charlesworth. Book, hey. the, book, the Big Book of Northern. So it's going to be a comedy play. Really? So very different, very interesting, good, some, some good support acts there as well. I already don't like the sound of that. <laughs> well, in fact, it's Northern, he's probably the one he doesn't but like no, the sound of. Lewis Charles is, is fantastic though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it'll be good. But why can't they just get up there and be funny for ten minutes and bugger off? We're going to do that as well. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Before I move on to our um, copious preparation notes, Lee. Which I've done none of, sorry. Um, <laughs> Private Eye, great, great magazine. Um, Every week, the, every fortnight, they run a, a piece on, you know, contextual advertising on the web. So if a new story is about a gardener having his wheelbarrow stolen, chances are there'll be an ad for a garden centre selling, you know, it's really good. But these are particularly good. I've got the wrong glasses on. So the Guardian... Um, Do you want me to hold the over here, Tim, so you can read it? <laughs> Guardian. Maybe the Brits are having us on. The world reacts to Boris Johnson as foreign minister. Fantastic. Accompanying advert. Don't let a bad dream become your reality. <laughs> There's also a dumb Britain where, you know, morons on quiz shows. These are, some of these are great. Bradley Walsh on The Chase. Never seen it or heard of it. Uh, Bradley Walsh, what kind of food stuff is a chipolata? Contestant, a potato. <laughs> now, you can kind of understand because chipolata Chip. sounds a bit like patata. Yeah. Patatas Chip. bravas. Maybe it was Spanish. <laughs> what, or what type of animal is a Cornish Rex and a Devon Rex? Would you like to guess the answer, Lee? I'm going to guess at a hen. Dinosaur. No, the answer the contestant gave, not the... So, uh, in the absence of your material, Lee, shall we get on with the notes? <laughs> with stuff? Yes, yeah, I stuff. mean, I, I do have, a, I do have a, a new story to talk to you about, but let's, well, let's do your stuff. Before we do that, if you can see my T-shirt, it's, it's from Game of Thrones, and it's, uh, hello ladies, oh no, sorry ladies, I'm in the Night's Watch. For those of you that know, the Night's Watchmen swear an oath of uh, celibacy. That's but, right. But, given my record... I should, you should just say, sorry ladies, full stop. That's right. All right. Sorry ladies, I'm on the watch. Yeah. <laughs> now then, a bacon-wielding woman, aged 86, fights off a thief in Iceland. Well, they say smoking's bad for you, Timmy, oh, but there you go. Smoky bacon, yes. uh, was it frozen at the time? <laughs> was she in Reykjavik? But I just love that, 86. Yeah. And what kind of... What kind of thieves have we got that we're breeding these days? Where they get beaten off by... An, uh, by an 86-year-old woman. <laughs> in have, Iceland. Have you ever been beaten off by an 86-year-old woman, Lee? It's one of the cashiers in Iceland, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the, uh, the accompanying caption, caption picture in the Bolton, New, the Bolton News website was literally a picture of some bacon. I mean, you know, lazy. It's lazy journalism. It is. Um, it is. The first person, Lee, to have double hand transplants in the UK says he feels whole again. And he looked, he's looking forward to trimming a hedge. Now, Lee, if you hadn't had use of your hands for a few years and then you got them back, what would be the first thing you'd put them on? Well, what I would do is I would break into it gently, Timmy. I would break into it maybe some waving. I wouldn't go out and start doing heavy <laughs> with a manual... With a cutting with device. With a cutting Imagine. Device. Take off the tip of your nose, oh. your kneecap, your toes. Or, ironically, take your hands off again. That's right. No, I was That's thinking right. I could think of better things to put my hands on. Uh, yeah. no, you could. My throat, usually, Tim. Usually. You do doing this. How about, how about shaking hands? Or waving? Well, but this yeah. just... Uh... Somebody give him a hand. <laughs> Anyway, no, no. So, that was that was gratuitous, and, and forgive me. Yeah. But you know, outside the Hennigans, we uh, some of our younger viewers said hello. By the way, thank you to you people. I think they were teachers or something, but they were, they were the other side. 
they had a great night and they said, uh, when, when are you doing the next podcast? You know, we watch all. I thought, this is great. We have people who watched him. So I, I got a fiver each for signed, autogra- uh, signed photographs. <laughs> it was great. Thank you. And you can come every week. They do. People. They do. Yeah, send us your uh, Facebook names yes. or whatever. Yeah, we'll share it. And then Facebook. we'll put them up. In fact, there's an idea. For a fiver a t- No, no. We'll put them up on the old podcast. Yes. Now what else? Bottoms up. Cheeky headline here, Lee. Bottoms up, exclamation mark. Man leaves clothes in pub as he goes to get cash. <clears throat> this was in Czechoslovakia or some, you know, God for sake of it. But, you know, who hasn't run out of cash at the bar? Yes. And decided to strip naked and go to a cash machine? Lee, we've all been there. Who hasn't run out of clothes in a bar? <laughs> <laughs> well, Me. <clears throat> we know somebody. The cash. Who shall remain nameless. Who got home one night with no shoes. <clears throat> And his recollection the next day is that he thinks he might have paid for his taxi with his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I think his parting comment to me, sorry, not his parting comment, his comment the next day was, when you last saw me, did I have shoes on? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, the best thing, all, yeah. If that was a phone call, the best answer to that is, who is this? <laughs> there are calls for jousting to be made in Olympic sport, Lee. Fantastic. Really? Horse, horse riding is very boring. Let's face it, you put on the Olympics, horse riding going around. Much more fun with two big pointed metal things <laughs> charging at each other, full throttle, yeah. much more entertaining than jumping over stuff and racing around a Racing around, or particularly in Rio, swimming through polluted waters. What, the horses? <laughs> yes, water polo. <laughs> of course. Hey! No, but all the, all the water in Rio the, for the water events is uh, polluted, it's filthy. Couple that with the Zika virus. Yeah. Now, those Zika mos- mosquitoes are going to get really full on that polluted water. Yeah. There'll be some medieval carnage then, Lee. They will. Hey, I'm... you see how that all... Uh... Roughly. We're all right. Yes. A bit yeah. of thought, Lee. Yes, from you. <laughs> not me. <laughs> I'm not even thinking. Now, if you refer to your notes, and this will flash up on your screen, ladies, uh, and some of you gentlemen out there, pick up your notes, Lee. The, the picture there, that's a picture of the ideal sort of face and structure to have a car crash in. Now, if that doesn't look like a perfect amalgam of me and Lee, I've no idea. <laughs> if you took me and Lee and melted us down and squashed all our horrible, fat, hairy bits together, we'd look like that. And then we could have a car crash, Lee. A That's, bit like this show. This, I was going to say, like this article. Car right crash home. TV. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Italian... We, we, we've, had, we've had this before, but it's so... Good. Italian mayor shuts offices after mass arrests for absenteeism. In other words, so many people are doing the old clock in and bugger off routine, yeah. nobody noticed. Yeah. He's, th- he's going to shut down the town hall because literally nobody's turning up for work. <laughs> well, they are at nine and then they're coming back again at five. <laughs> That's right. A police video showed one man trying to tamper with a security camera and when he realised this wasn't going to work, he put a cardboard box over his head and carried on clocking in and out. He'd just been seen trying to do this. Uh, now then, dozens, dozens of people, Lee, burnt in Texas walking on hot coals at one of those um, motivational, you know, Tony Robbins. Mind over matter. Mind over matter. Yes. Yeah, well, you know, that kind of, the thing is, that presupposes, in fact, it hinges, the whole thing hinges on the speed at which you mince over the coals. Yeah. Because coal is a very poor conductor of direct heat or something like that. Anyway, that's how most people get away with it. He had so many people queuing up to do this that there was a log jab at the front. So people are running on going, I'm going to do this thing. And then they got stuck halfway because there's so many people at the other end. Oh, oh, oh. So they're going, ah, Jesus, off. Get, get me off this thing. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have moonwalked over this. <laughs> Done a Michael Jackson Look, backwards. <laughs> God bless this guy, Tony Robbins, if he's getting thousands of dollars off these morons. Yeah. In other news, Lee, <laughs> the world's oldest paycheck was a beer token. Archaeologists have discovered. Fantastic. I imagine an archaeologist and an anthropologist got together, had a joke, uh, and came up with this. But you know, it's absolutely right. But nothing much has changed. Plus, I change, plus, they're like men shows. <laughs> Mesdames et messieurs. All you need for your beer tokens is £10. <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> exchange that for what? Four beer tokens and the no name? Four, yes. Yeah, a four, four <laughs> beer tokens. That's the no name Harwood. Hang on. Oh, yes. Q music. The no-name Howard, purveyor of fine ales to the gentry. <laughs> and there we go. Um, listening to Mozart can lower your blood pressure as much as cutting salt from your diet. Right. Now, a little interesting fact, Lee, I discovered this myself, I remembered. Where was Mozart born? 
Salzburg. Oh, <laughs> very good. Have you read the notes? It was just a wild guess. Well, you're very good. It was either that or Salt Lake City. Oh. It was one, of, one of them I was going to Mozart, go Mozart, Mormon, Mormon, Mum, 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 Mum. We did the Dancing Mania thing a few weeks ago, but it still tickles me now, so I'm going to do it again. Do it. A medieval... Uh, back with the medieval... Um, like a, a, a collective, conscious, uh, kind of trance-like state where hundreds of people would begin dancing in a kind of religious ecstatic fervour or whatever. But it, it wasn't just in one place, it was all over Europe. People just went nuts. Sometimes thousands of people, you know, and people died of heart attacks and all that. Now this one guy, what? And one monk danced himself to death. <laughs> just, I don't know, nothing funny about death in itself, but you know. Yeah, one monk danced one monk himself dance to death. is hilarious. It sounds like it would be the start of a <clears throat> rave song, couldn't it, Tim? One monk danced him to death. No, uh, but this is... One guy started his own thing. He was in just in the, the village square, you know, where he's going. And he thought... He must have thought. He must have thought, right. Because he had watches in those days. Yeah. He must have thought, right. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody joined in. He did it for hours. And then he just sort of went... Oh. <laughs> I'm off. I'm, I'm off. This is no good. Uh, that tickled me, isn't it? Uh, story from China. Thank uh, God for that, Timmy. Yeah, story from uh, China. A couple having a massive row in a safari park. Picture Norsley Safari Park. I like this. Uh, again, you know, true true story. Um, she becomes so agitated, jumps out of the car. However, it's in the tiger enclosure. <gasps> so, oh. tiger comes over. Oh, plaything. Starts mauling the woman. Husband goes, I'm not getting out. <laughs> <laughs> well, she'll be dead in a couple of minutes. To be honest with you. Plenty His, her sister, though, in the back, yeah. she jumps out to help. Tiger 2 goes, oh, this Chinese takeaway has got two main meals. Oh, marvellous. So, yes, she gets pulled off, mauled, and she does get eaten and killed. First one, she survives with cuts and oh. cuts, and cuts. actually. No bruises, just oh, cuts. Just cuts, yeah. yeah. Of course, unless the time... <laughs> <laughs> but... So there you go. So that was a Chinese takeaway gag. The Chinese takeaway, two hours later, tigers are going, I'm hungry again. Oh no. It's 2016. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. And I will allow that blasphemy. That's Thank shocking. You. Thank you. I thought you were going to say, you know, well, she, he can have the wife. There's plenty more where she came from. And then his sister, the sister-in-law gets it. As it kills. She actually, she does die. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. well. Anyway. Okay. Well, we'll keep that in for your... Um, Amusement. Mortification, Lee. Oh. We're only here for our own amusement, we know that, don't we? Well, there's only 11 people, and four of them were in the Hen- Hennigan's last <laughs> week. Right, yeah. uh, Daddy went past a red light. A Massachusetts boy, age six, busts his father. He apparently rang the police and said, Daddy went through a red light. <laughs> you know, traffic infractions in America. Can, if, in fact, if you're, if you're not white, they can get you killed, and this is no, no laughing matter. Yeah. But, but the... this, this kid rings the police and grasses his dad up. <laughs> Next phone call, hello, is that the adoption agency? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And then the kid, the dad say, he's a smart kid, the father said. When he says he's going to do something, he really does it. Yeah, this kid's a grass. What about when, when he rings his mum saying, Daddy's giving Auntie Rachel a special hug. <laughs> yes, well done, child, then, I think. That's no. brilliant. Yeah. That's bad enough being on stage, Tim. It certainly is for the audience as well. Yeah, all right. Well, listen, <clears throat> this may be one of the very few unedited podcasts, unless you've got something else to go at, Lee. Apart from the sweary, sweary, Timmy, you might want well, to yeah. pixelate them. Well, mm. I meant cut. I'm going to oh. edit the swearing, obviously. Okay. Although, never forget your favourite Google search term, Nicky Campbell is a... <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, Anything going on TV-wise, book-wise? I'll tell you what I can recommend, everybody. The new Jason Bourne film. Ah. And it says at the beginning, on the BBFC certificate, contains moderate violence. Well, sorry, I said, moderate, yeah. on, only moderate, you know. <laughs> anyway, by the end of the he's broken so many necks, elbows, joints, and, and just... Uh, what, what the hell, what constitutes extreme violence these days? But anyway, I've got one complaint, Paul Greengrass, director, if indeed you're watching this. Um, it's this very close-up style, and handheld a lot of it. You know, it's like, you, when you're old, like us, Lee, and you're, you're set, sat in front of a massive screen... All you can see is things jiggling about. We don't want that. A bit like a night in Manchester for you, Lee. <laughs> or Bolton, or any night, really. Anyway, uh, apart from that, Paul Greengrass, very good indeed. I'm enjoying, uh, TV-wise, I'm enjoying the second season of Mr. Robot. Very good. Yes, yeah, excellent yes I'm enjoying that. The first one got a bit turgid, got a little bit... A bit flabby, didn't flaccid. It, didn't it, Tim? Got a bit... Oh, yeah. oh, You can call no. that as well. Yeah, or, or I could leave that in. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'll do the decent thing. <laughs> Mr. Robots, a very good series. Yes. Um, what else? Game of Thrones, I've just finished catching up on the latest series. 
not season, we're not Americans, series, yes. and it was very good indeed. Yes. Anyway. Well, also just enjoyed reading uh, uh, an old book of Woody Allen's, uh, The Complete Prose, which was uh, very good. Really very really good. good. Brilliant, brilliant work. If uh, only some of that could rub off on you. That I know. I mean, it's like to steal some of his stuff and put it on stage. <laughs> I mean, you know. Anyway, <laughs> so let's not forget our sponsors this week. <laughs> Tong Tai. Oh, no, Lee, that's <laughs> the no-name. <laughs> No name. The bears of etc. <laughs> and uh, who else can we promote? Tonto, Hennigan's Comedy Club and Music yes. Venue or something. Why not? When are they going to sort out the new Hennigan's at Astley Bridge? Oh, please. All right. <laughs> and with that, <clears throat> on that futile note of desperation, everybody, thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you all next time. Ta-ta, Lee.